Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thanks for zooming in today for this hot topic on the learnings of COVID-19 and the aftermath, a conversation between East and West. My name is Marco Olivier Zwicky. I lead our sea care business for the region, uh, Europe, Africa, and Middle East. And it's a great pleasure to be your host today. The idea of today's webinar actually was to share some of the learnings we have from China uh, so we don't make the same mistakes uh, in, in other places. As, as Europe now is in the epic center of this pandemic, uh, we thought it was a very nice moment to, to get some insights from China and actually apply them uh, across Europe. It's a very emotional topic uh, and, of course, a, a big topic across the world. Um, so before we start, I would just remind uh, a few things to everybody. Um, the webinar will be recorded um, and you are muted during the webinar, uh, but please, if you have any questions, you're still able to post uh, with the link on the screen. Uh, we have had a lot of questions already, but please, if you have anything else that comes to your mind uh, during the talk, uh, please don't be shy. And uh, I'm joining you here from Switzerland. Uh, we just had notice yesterday from the government that they will ease some of the, reg the, the rules and they will open shops again. But please stay safe, follow the instructions of the authorities, mainly keeping the distance and wash your hands regularly with soap if you can, or use some alcoholic gels. Um, so let's jump in as you're all eager to, to hear more. And I would like to introduce my very special guest and colleague, Sydney Deng, who's the head of Sea Care for China. He is at your full disposal uh, this morning, and I hope you take full advantage of that. So he hello, Sydney. Thanks for being here. And just to start off, uh, how are you? How is your family? And maybe start with how did you experience this uh, virus and, and the spread of the virus uh, in China? Yeah. Hi, Mark. Thanks. Good morning and a good afternoon to everyone. Uh, I'm Sydney Den from CK in China, and I'm glad to join in. Thanks, Mark, for your great care and the greetings. Now we are very good and have been back to work in Shanghai for more than almost one month. Everything is become back to normal. Uh, as you said, in China, the virus break out, broke out at the middle of the January. Uh, it is a really a difficult time for us at the beginning, as during that time we are uh, enjoying our spring festival, the biggest holiday in China. For my family, we have planned a southwest province visit uh, with almost five days. We planned it two months before, however, we have to cancel it and stay at home for almost two months. It's really sad. And uh, no visits of relatives and uh, vacation canceled like everyone now in the EU. Whatever, uh, it is glad that the whole situation has been controlled finally, and the uh, current personal life and the business activities almost recovered. Yeah, so thanks. I know this is a very difficult topic for many families right now, and, and uh, thanks for being here and, and sharing that so others can, can benefit from it. So maybe you can share uh, some of your team's journey, so thinking about our business and how we keep things running and can you share your, your top three to five key learnings uh, from, from this experience? Yeah, I'm very glad to. Uh, first, actually, it is a very special, I think, a public health issue. At the beginning, uh, very little information had been uh, released, but uh, we really see a lot of increasing infected people numbers every day. So we are all in fear and uh, not sure uh, what is going on. However, a uh, very quick information public by the government and also a lot of instructions from the doctors and experts. The condition uh, become more and more better and has been controlled as predicted. So it is very important, I think, to listen to the government or the experts order to follow the actions like uh, stay at home, wear masks like in China, uh, washing hands, no gathering, social distance, uh, I think it needs time to turn to good, especially under this pandemic situation. We need a cooperation and the patience. Also, everyone, I think, can be a hero in this battle, especially uh, in the, under this, this very difficult situation. And uh, second learning, I think, uh, for the team, 
internal communication is very important. In Xinjiang, China, as we see uh, in the presentation, an emergency, emer emergency team has been quickly built only after three days of the, our spring festival. It's still in the holiday. Actually, the company has really emphasized on that. The team is across all functions with the key responsible people to work as a whole team. We have we a daily fast. checking. Yeah, very good. Yeah, we daily checking with the health condition uh, with each team and uh, sharing the latest government guideline and uh, reward updates from the company. Timely communication, detailed plans, and the deliver of the mask to every staff. These information with transparent information can really help our team members to stay close and feel warm from the company. And it's a great care with support. Also, when we back to work, everyone understand the reopen policy. Like we see that we need to wear masks and washing hands, scan your health barcode and check your body temperature when you're entering the buildings, social distance in the workplace. All these actions has been well communicated and followed. As a result, we are very proud that we have zero suspected and zero confirmed in Xinjiang, China. Very well, nice, good news. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Uh, the third learning, I think uh, we need to focus on the customer as we are running the business. Everyone has been locked at home uh, without any uh, experience. So keep a dialogue, uh, stay with your customer side is very important. Say hello and get know what their needs and encouraging, encourage each other to increase the relationship is also very essential. In China, every company uh, needs sufficient masks, uh, then they can have the rework application can be allowed. So our Syngenta provide more than 40,000 masks and uh, disinfectants to our channel partners. So in the presentation on the left, uh, actually you can see this is appreciated notes posted in the WeChat. Actually, this is uh, some like uh, social media in China, like uh, Facebook uh, in the Western countries. After they received these goods, which is uh, in the very shortage condition. So it actually, you cannot uh, even buy with money. It is in the short stage. So the, this kind of support can really enhance the relationship and hand in hand with your customer to overcome this crisis. Also using the new way uh, is very helpful to close work with your customer. Uh, the picture in the middle uh, is the education webinar with a comb planting. Actually, it is held by our uh, C companies. The, the lady is the technical manager from the C company and also invites our Syngenta C care technical manager to work with her on the early seed plant protection introduction. So you can see actually it's a joint work and they can really benefit not only to seed but also the plant protection. Mm -hmm. During the lockdown, we can also hold a, a many off, uh, online meetings. Uh, you can see on the right, some digital meetings can really help. And the launch meeting, field demonstration meetings can be carried out, uh, can really contribute and interact with our channel partners and also the farmers. Some of these events also jointly with stakeholders with more public benefits. And, uh, Last but not least, I think uh, uh, guarantee the timely supply. Uh, please, next slide. After the knowledge of your customer needs, early communication and a plan within the internal functions to make sure the production and the timely delivery to your customer is the key. Lockdown makes more challenge to your site management and the logistic and the early plan is essential. So in the slides, you can see but the teamwork in production site of Syngenta and also the commitment from our site colleagues. Actually in China, one production site achieved the historical highest volume in March to meet our business requirements. So it's a really a great achievement. Yeah, of course we have uh, similar issues uh, also across Europe. Um, but maybe before we move on, just you mentioned a few times uh, communication is key. Uh, maybe you can elaborate on that a bit and explain how you did that. Uh, maybe show an example. Yeah, uh, 
maybe I, I just actually I can provide one of the video to show that uh, we have a very timely supply with uh, one of the, our Sikia product April Max to the northeast. This video actually has been shot by our customer during the lockdown period. We provide a delicate uh, truck to distribute uh, around the 60,000 liter April Max to the customer. And uh, they appreciate this uh, kind of highly supply under this lockdown situation. So everyone is very happy and uh, they can helping them prepare for the coming uh, seed treatment application season and uh, can really serve our farmers. So you can see that this is a very good example for us they're really helping our customers with the right communication, understand their needs, and have a better serve their customers. Okay, Mark, I think these are all the learnings from China, and I hope it helps. And uh, but also we know that the Europe has so many companies, uh, countries. Do you how do you do with this complexity in your region, and uh, how is it for you? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, as as you know, in my region we have forty plus countries, uh, so very complex. So I think there's a few things that we try uh, in Europe, but we we don't try to manage the complexity because it's too much. So I think we focus more on uh, what we can control. Uh, so of course, first the safety of our people and our employees. Uh, and stay connected. So we have regular check-ins, like you mentioned, with your team. Um, regular check-ins. Um, maybe we can show the evolution on the, the European uh, side of things with the video. Um, you can see how the yeah it changed from from China, and you can see how yeah the the Europeans are quite affected with Italy coming in, and and of course uh, later on you will see the U.S. also jumping uh, far ahead, but. Uh, so we're in the in this middle of it right now. I think we're we're seeing some ease of the numbers, but we work very hard with supply. And you mentioned that Sydney. I think uh, we try to stay uh, as close as we can to supply to make sure uh, we have the right product in the right time, so the food chain actually doesn't stop. So seed movement, uh, uh, crop protection products, they're moving, and so we work very hard day and night. And we have an example uh, which I would like to show here from our production and supply team. Uh, you see here in the middle that we're actually producing some hand sanitizer in our sites in Monte in Switzerland, and we distribute that. And we've seen many examples around the world that companies are doing that. So I think we're part of that. So we're proud of it. And you see some examples of actually people in the plants. Uh, and you can see here the example of people that usually work in the office. They're actually helping out in the in the production filling line, uh, just to help out and keep things running, keeping the flow of the of the of, of the availability of the products going. So I think as we are in the spring, and planting is happening now, we we made a huge effort trying to 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 yeah work with this pandemic with the new rules and keep supply going. And you mentioned communication, of course. I think that's a key. So we try to stay connected and and uh, as we learned fast from your example in terms of video uh, or, or the digital tools that we have available uh, also today in this webinar that's it's probably new for many of us but we're getting used to it and so we we still stay connected and we see how that gives us also some energy um, and uh, i would like to show an example of of a different way how we stay connected to customers in romania and and uh, we have uh, Silvio here in the in the fields, and although he cannot travel um, with the customers in a car like we used to, he still goes scouting the, the the fields and actually gives update live updates over over a video call to customers. So it's it's just a a new way of doing the same service, and you can still stay connected. And I think it's it's those creative kind of examples uh, like Silvio and the team in Romania came up with that is nice to see. So. Um, and maybe a last point, we try to stay away from the complexity in a way that we think about scenarios instead of just a normal business, right? So we think about what can really, what might happen and we think about what, how do we react before it happens? And of course, uh, that gives us a bit of a heads up and a bit of flexibility and the mentality of, of an agile thinking 
uh, can benefit in that sense. So we all put the people in the right uh, mindset. So we, we see new trends uh, emerge, like the, the government is now with a bit more control in many countries and people accept that, I think, for the most part. Um, and this might have impacts on how we make policy eventually. Uh, yeah, how how agriculture is actually important uh, going forward. But we, we will have to see. But we try to flex, stay flexible and, and work on some scenarios. And as you mentioned, the relationships are really tested here. And it is really a pr privilege to work in this industry as as the governments are actually putting us into a, into the headlights and 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 we as as Seacare and Syngenta we can help farmers become the public heroes again and that makes the team feel really valued and and actually feels like we contribute to that uh, especially when Europe we haven't seen a uh, we haven't had a hunger crisis in in many years and so this topic of food security is very important again and I think we are all part of that change so very proud of that uh, today. Um, I will I will stop there because we probably also want to spend some time thinking about what's coming after because you're already over the peak, you're in already in exit mode, and uh, can you share some thoughts on what should Europe expect in this exit uh, moment? Yeah, uh, first I'm very glad to see that there is a lot of actions has been done in the Europe and also good to look that the business is still uh, going on. Yes, for the long-term perspective, I think uh, uh, it's a long period of battle. It might take another even half a year, even longer. But uh, as you said, that uh, the people's health is the most important. So currently, uh, even in China, we are still asked to wear the mask to have more preventative ways to help everyone healthy. And also, I think the safety measures like washing hands, keep a social distance is also very important, not only for, for China, but also I think for the, for the Europe and even America. Uh, second thing, I think uh, now you have uh, also uh, touched a lot about the communication way. Currently, we cannot have the face-to-face, -face. everyone have to stay at home. So some of the new ways of the communication uh, becoming more and more popular, like we use now with the Zoom, or some of the digital campaign will be more popular. So it is ask people to learn more about getting used to these new tools and have a who, if anyone can have a very quick adopt on these tools, they will ahead in the market. Mm -hmm. Also, um, I think uh, um, as you also <laughs> said that the, the Europe don't have uh, such, uh, don't have any hunger uh, issues for many years. But in China, it is not. Uh, I think as we still remember that in the 1950s, the whole country suffered a big hunger. Mm -hmm. so, so I think uh, uh, in this crisis, we have a big focus in, uh, on agriculture, maybe not in China, but also on the other developing countries. So food security will be a hot topic again. And even now in China, there is a lot of subsidies and focus on the rice, coal, and even the soybean. So this might be benefit for the farmer and help the uh, support through the in new investments. So it is also ask uh, our company like Syngenta, we are doing the technologies on the seeds and the crop protection. We got more responsibilities to helping these farmers uh, on this new uh, condition. Also perhaps uh, some, of, some of the supply chain, uh -huh, it is also very popular because of the lockdown the countries and the companies will rethink about the balance of the global supply and the local setup to cover this kind of unexpected situation. Uh, I think, uh, especially for the uh, globalized uh, companies, this become more and more issue on the uh, multiple sites, uh, transportation, and also the production. I think the that's a very good point, Sydney. Uh, also yeah. valid for Europe, of course. Uh, sorry to cut you, but uh, I think this is something we will talk about for a long time, and not only uh, for the next couple of weeks, right? Exactly. So we can also see that, uh, like uh, the raw material production from India and China, and then um, yeah. formulated in the in the U.S. or even the Europe, and uh, back to the these uh, uh, developing market, actually the logistic it, it really become a challenge. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but uh, last but not least, I think uh, I still have the strong belief that uh, everyone can win this battle and uh, see the rainbows uh, in the end. So we have a good wish and to everyone, and uh, I think everyone can uh, overcome this battle and everyone can become the hero. Yeah. Very good. Thanks, Sydney, for sharing. I think we ha we are just at least in Europe we're getting some easier numbers on on new infected people. And uh, uh, we can learn a lot from that. So thanks for sharing. Um, I think we would now move into some of the question and answers. Uh, and uh, please, you can still post some questions. If we, not, if we cannot cover all the questions, um, we will answer you individually uh, after this webinar. So please don't be shy. Um, you can still use the link on, the, on, the, on, this, on your screen. Uh, I will try to bundle a bit. I had a look. Uh, there's a, a few questions around how to keep staff motivated, Sydney. Uh, how do you yeah, keep them the morale high and how, uh, how the team can stay connected? Yeah, thanks for the question. I think it's a very good one. Uh, uh, you know, the lockdown situation we never experienced. So <laughs> it's really, really boring <laughs> during the lockdown situation. Not only for the individual family and even the team, uh, even after the reopen. Uh, thanks to some of the good social media, uh, as we, I mentioned uh, just now, the WeChat, uh, like the Facebook or, or the other social media uh, mm -hmm. apps from the Westerners. Actually, uh, we had a very good uh, group uh, discussion. And uh, as I said before, checking health conditions every day and uh, also published uh, some of the guidelines from the company and even the government. And also, uh, we share a lot of funny stuff, materials, actually, uh, because people are really boring. They can make a lot of very short videos and uh, spread to help, to help everyone to be more optimistic uh, during their daily life. And yeah, we can probably after... not show all of those videos here. Uh, probably need to censor some of those. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> and... And, uh, and also, uh, after the rework, because of most of the people cannot uh, back to the office, only these guys uh, are with the production and even with some of the technical work, but most of them can still have to uh, stay at home. So some of the Zoom, uh, as, as we use now, uh, with online business training and also business plan for the daily uh, uh, training is also take place. So this really help us still like work as a team and keep a busy, keep a business improvements. So I, all these things I think still can motivate it with the team and keep us connected and improved. Yeah, nice. Uh, we have also with my team, we have some virtual happy hours and we have a, a, a drink with each other over, over ah. Zoom. Yeah, it's not the same thing, of course, but... Uh, but trying to stay a bit connected and, and share not only business topics, but yeah, understand how people are. And we have uh, people, they, they make meetings with their kids on the lap. And so it's, it's all a nice energy or the dogs or the, the pets. Yeah. So a lot You're of right. funny videos. <laughs> I, I, and I can, they, I can uh, sorry for the interrupt. I can have a one uh, examples that we got the cloud drink <laughs> within the right. team to celebrate nice. one of the, one of the, our members' birthday. Yes, as you mentioned, it's a new way, right? <laughs> that, that's it. So we'll see what sticks after. Um, and yep. there was a few questions around the, the movement on seats. So if there's any update on, on yeah, how is there any tr trouble at borders? And may, maybe I can take this one uh, for Europe. Uh, so the seat associations, they are actually working very hard. And I think the governments are very close to that so so far we don't see any any issues we have had some delays but but so far we have been very privileged to be on a on a critical status uh, notice so i think we are very um we are very uh, close to that so so far so good i am not aware of maybe other countries in in south america or or the us but uh, so far i think there's a big big push from governments across the world to to keep things flowing for for this essential uh, material, um, I don't know how it is in China. You have a you have a huge country. Um, the logistics probably is also a, a bit of an issue still. So, any thoughts on that, Sid? 
Yeah, uh, the good thing is actually the, all the highway are for free in China, but uh, you know, in different uh, provinces, even they got a central government uh, policy, but uh, there is still some of the limitation during different, uh, different places, provinces. But uh, finally, I think uh, uh, after the whole lockdown, uh, everything become normal. So uh, it, it become more as usual. But uh, yes, during that uh, lockdown period, it really become a, a key issue on that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I will have to see how that develops. Uh, there's another question for you, Sid, uh, regarding yeah. how is the business going after uh, the COVID crisis? So is it better or worse, <laughs> or is it the same, or what is? Yeah. Well, how do you see that in terms of your business? Yeah. Thanks for that great question. <laughs> yes. Originally, uh, everyone think that. Uh, because of the lockdown, actually, all these business dialogue and activities have to lock, have to uh, shut down. So, but uh, finally, in the Q1, we got a, a very great uh, business achievements. Then we planted. Actually, we have a more than forty percent increase than last year, and uh, I can say some of the <laughs> reason behind. And uh, actually, as I mentioned, first of all, we have a very good uh, planning. Uh, during the season, because uh, seed treatment is uh, first a step or before the planting. So just before the spring festival, we have already done a lot of uh, yeah. campaigns and uh, customer communications. Uh, but during the lockdown, actually, or we have a very uh, close contact with our customer because they are also stay at home. We can go uh, contact, know their needs through the call, WeChat, and the other ways, and uh, Get ready for for potential their needs and also supplies and on the logistics. The last but not the least, the digital campaign. I think uh, in China is not the first year we run this. We have already prepared for more than two years. We are, uh, in Syngenta we already start to test this kind of uh, uh, communication and the customer approach uh, from 2018. So we had a certain uh, experience and also uh, one of the local technical supporting on the digital has been built. So we had a very quick action with the whole team. We can have a, have a very good digital campaign. So after that, the tiny supply, especially in the March, can really uh, make a head start in the market. So actually, I'm very proud that uh, our business is going even better than before. Very well. So at least some positives out of it. And uh, I can share a few thoughts on Europe. I think yeah, uh, we are, we're still, yeah, we're not so sure how it's going to come, but we struggle a lot with weather now. So it's, it's not so much the COVID crisis, but actually farmers struggle with, with planting because it's so dry and it has been dry for many weeks uh, from east to west, uh, north to south. So it's just started to rain in Switzerland. I hope we can send some rain across the, the region. And, and if you have any help uh, up above, please uh, pray for us for some rain. Um, there's a, another question uh, uh, around the, the movement of, of east to west uh, on seeds. Um, I'm not sure we, we might have already answered that, but uh, I think maybe another thought on, on it. Um, uh, if you think about, we haven't seen big shortages, I think, in, in, in the stores either so far. I think we have seen some of the things are missing, but um, if, you, if you look at, we, we all are getting used to it. So I think even governments are, are, are much better prepared now and in, in how they adjust. I think they're more cautious, but they, they have had some learnings. And I think, you know, this flow of, of, of the essential products I think they they're now much much easier. So I think even the borders are limited it's, uh, to people. I think in terms of the goods, that's much easier. So uh, we have seen a few delays just in the first beginning uh, of the lockdowns in Europe in in early March. But now I think it's it's going much uh, much better. Um, good. Thanks for sharing uh, for that. There was a question. Um, um, on the planning for Europe, so some of the scenarios. Um, and what are we thinking about? Uh, what kind of scenario? So it, it's hard to say, and thanks for this question, it's hard to say what's going to happen, right? And uh, there's a lot of fear in the system uh, of a recession and a global recession and the worst recession in, in 100 years or so. Um, so nobody has lived through something like this, I think, uh, 
in the past year. So we, what we think about is okay, what is what is what can we do to really um, make sure that the, the product is in the right place? We're thinking about commodity prices in in different scenarios. We we also think about scenarios of currencies. As you see, the the oil the oil price has plummeted, and and even they pay you to keep to take oil. Uh, which is very bizarre scenario. So we're, this has a big influence, for example, on African countries where uh, the governments are financing the farm operations and the subsidies with oil money. Um, so, so it's really questions about the cash flow and, and how do we stay liquid. And I know that some governments are looking at some packages to support uh, to support that, and, and, but that's only kind of to keep us going. Normally the money isn't free, so the, the we have to pay the money back, and so that's something we think about. What are the the scenarios in the countries actually? Because generally, I think if you look at the a region, it's very hard to make general assumptions. So it's quite specific, country by country. Um, uh, I mentioned currency. Uh, Russia has, the, I think, the Russian ruble has dropped twenty five percent over the first quarter. And, and so that's obviously something that we need to watch out for in terms of the business side, but also for our customers. Uh, are, they be, are they able to pay? Um, are they able to, to, to stay liquid? I think that's a, a, a key. And now with the weather, of course, we are in this business of agriculture. We don't know the weather, but we deal with this all the time. Uh, we now have a, a rather a, a situation of drought in Europe. We can learn a few things from our Australian colleagues, and we have some some rain dancers, uh, as we call them, uh, from Australia, which we 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 would like to consult with because they have this scenario more than, more than once uh, uh, over a year. So they they worry about this all the time. Um, I don't know any thoughts from you, uh, Sydney, uh, on the general economy and and how that will affect us. Yeah, as you mentioned, that it is really difficult to predict because there is uh, too much like a blank, black swan, right? <laughs> it, yes. Nowadays, especially on the economy, uh, different scenarios. And uh, also, as you said, country by country has a different uh, situation. But uh, from my personal uh, observation that under the economic crisis, the, the agriculture is still the essential. Also, you can see that some of the developing countries also uh, lock down their exports of the, these grains and to make sure that, uh, especially on the food security uh, consideration. Uh, like in China, that uh, even we see there is an increasing uh, planted acreage on mm. the rice. Early rice currently have been encouraged, uh, soybean, corn, and even the cereals. So under this crisis, I think uh, uh, looking looking back to the to the agriculture, that uh, we sh should have a more confidence on that, and also like uh, uh, our as a corporate perfection, and with the innovation, we got a more responsibilities on that. Yeah. So under the Syngenta Group currently is it is uh, under under a China hold a Chinese company hold. So we think we got a more obligations not only for China but for the whole world. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And uh, there may be linked to that. Yeah. There's a question on the food sustainability uh, and and the focus on Africa and what can we do to help? I mean, we are looking, we are working with a lot of the governments actually uh, in, in Africa. And, and so we're going to look at what, how do we, what models can we do to actually make some financial planning uh, going forward? So I think that's something specifically we're doing for, for AME. Some of the countries with the governments in Africa already. Um, a question, Sid, for you here. So there's a lot of things that worked really well, um, but can you share some things that didn't work uh, so well? So some hiccups or some things that uh, you would do differently today? Yeah, uh, indeed. Actually, uh, we are quite lucky, uh, not only on the environment, but also on the business. I think. Uh, one of the learning currently, I think, is also taken place in the Western countries. We really need to listen to the experts. Uh, we, we call it it's experts, and not uh, not the others. So just to check very carefully with more pre preventative uh, um, ways uh, to have a less contact uh, with potential infestation and the epidemiology. 
and uh, follow the guideline and also travel uh, without uh, with uh, without a long distance uh, it's li like airplane or etc so from from current uh, experience uh, some of the uh, in china we call it the second wave of this mm -hmm. potential uh, 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 pandemic it is all coming from the uh, imported case so actually we will still stay cautious uh, about these preventative methods is very very important so mm -hmm. don't lose don't lose your confidence but also need really need to uh, have a very high level cautious about this yeah 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 maybe in in link to that uh, some of the sites so a question on was there any any risk management plans in place beforehand so before this came so some some protocols that helped us in this crisis was that in place before uh, that yes. was a question yes i think especially on the production sites uh, in china because we got the emergency team they mm -hmm. also had a lot of hsc experts in in the organization they can uh, write down a lot of uh, uh, process or the protocols to have a more preventative way to make sure less potential contact or contamination from the uh, uh, infectants. But also, I think uh, uh, it is uh, very important to have a very uh, mindset about uh, these importance. So, so I think uh, the emergency team and uh, ask for the advice from the experts or professionals will be the most important things under this situation. Yeah, and I, I imagine also coming out of the crisis, we're going to review those plans and think about how we would do it better in the next one. Uh, so I think that's that's not only true for Syngenta, but that's for sure also true for governments uh, trying to see how they would manage this going forward. A big impact yeah. I've seen, just a thought on the airline industry, obviously, they are very highly impacted here. So I think they're going to have some protocols to make it easier to travel again but uh, it's going to be different right it's going to be uh, somewhat yep. different so i think a lot of thoughts going into that too yeah um good uh, there was another um question on the sites and the factories and and uh, what about during the, the the lockdown so how did we control the movement and what what happened in during the lockdown and how do we keep the sites running <laughs> sid any thoughts yeah, actually, in China, um, during the whole lockdown period, no factories and no business are allowed to running to run. So um, actually, before uh, you would like to open or uh, reopen, you need to uh, apply the, uh, a, a standard form to make sure that uh, you got everything on the on the checklist, like a mask, infestants, and to make sure there there every. Every day you got a twice temperature check, and uh, uh, your your workplace has a certain area with a social distance and uh, no gathering of the lunch. So a lot of uh, instructions and uh, in the checklist. So after that, if we all have been have been ready, then someone will send you, some supervisor will send you to the factory and to check if it is everything is in the ready. So. I think uh, uh, from the Syngenta perspective, uh, we are very proud that our uh, Kunshan site is the first wave factories can be reopened in, in, that, in that city. Mm -hmm. So which means that so Syngenta has a very high standard of HSC and all, all these actions, which has also been uh, appreciated by the uh, local authorities. And mm -hmm. the Syngenta also have been set as um, ex example and all model uh, in that city to have the reopen yeah yeah i think in europe uh, we have uh, actually had a whole you know some if if one person was suspect to have been infected whole shifts were were actually told to stay at home to quarantine so there was a an, an immediate first impact but i think they reacted really well in in the measures as you said that the, the temperature checks and the masks um, and so that even people from the offices could jump in and help us. I think that was the only way we could do it uh, at the end with some of these measures. And I think it's not only uh, our our own uh, production site, but our suppliers. So 
we need yeah i think it shows that the relationships we have is are very solid with also suppliers and i think uh, this also helps us to keep going so we don't have to worry about the raw materials uh, uh coming in or packaging things or, or labels i think that's for europe was was key so we could rely really on our on our uh, on our partners uh, next question here yeah you want to share something else sid yeah, I, I want to add a one one comment uh, just to come to my mind. That's uh, because we know that uh, in China there is uh, in the in the production site normally the workers are not a uh, citizen. It's coming out of from the other provinces. In China, that's in the early uh, reopen stage. That generally all the people just uh, if they don't have the uh, healthy barcode, they need to be isolated with fourteen days quarantine. Uh, as a quarantine measures, right. uh, if there is uh, no issues on the temperature, then yeah. they're allowed to continue to work. So all these measures, I think, can make sure that there is a low risk with this kind of reopen. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, correct. Uh, and I think some of these will continue, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe we're running a bit uh, out of time here. A lot of questions, but maybe the last one. Uh, uh, so in the press, we read a lot about China helping Europe with supplies. Are we aware of any, uh, or how Europe is helping China during the crisis? I think we have one example. Uh, yeah, Sid, you wanna share? Or I can talk to this. I think we have one example where, I think at the beginning of the crisis, actually our sites uh, sent some masks to China. Um, so our sites in Europe, actually in, in the Netherlands, and we actually helped them out with some some of this protective gear and actually now China is returning the favor. So you can see how teams internally are really stepping up to make sure that the people have the right to protective gear. So it's a nice east to west, west to east story. And I'm sure there's many more of these uh, uh, around the world. So I think uh, this is the, the connection that we mentioned with Sydney. I think during the during the webinar today is you need to stay connected and, and people step up and help. I think these are just one, this is just one of many stories uh, that we yeah, see. Yeah, Mark. Yes, Mark. Uh, I would like to have uh, more examples about these uh, co uh, help. Uh, at the beginning, as you mentioned, from, from Japan, also the Western uh, under Syngenta uh, global supply chain, we really got a support with the masks. But after that, uh, we also uh, uh, export a lot of uh, these uh, investments and also masks to to other world. So during this time, I would like to take this chance to thank everyone uh, who really care about our our business and also support China's business and uh, people's health and is a great support before. But also, we would like to support the world on behalf of Xinjiang and even China. And anything we can do, just feel free to contact. Thanks. Well said, Sydney. I think on that note, I will just uh, follow on your on your lead here. And I think that's we are very proud to be part of this uh, food system to try to support agriculture and actually our farmers and customers. I think we're privileged in this situation. So I think the real heroes, yeah, besides the nurses and the doctors, uh, are really the farmers making it happen and actually getting things into the ground, planting this spring. And and uh, we need to yeah make our best uh, possible ways to support that. So thanks for anyone who is helping that. I think uh, thank you, Sid, for being here on the hot seat. Thanks for sharing. I think is is great. We can take a lot of learnings out of that. I think uh, um, we're very grateful that we we have a great connection. We have a global reach, so we can learn from each other. Um, so thanks for tuning in, everybody. If you have any questions unanswered, we will get to you directly. Uh, sorry we didn't have enough time for it, but that shows how, um, how much energy we have uh, around the globe. And let's use it for the positive. I think difficult times for everybody, but uh, please uh, stay safe. Um, connect to us. There's a lot of material that we can share with you. And if you need any help, please get in contact. We have many more webinars like this on our DigiCare uh, website. So please connect to us, stay in touch, stay safe, and see you next time. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you.